Imagine if Twitter was overwhelmed with server traffic or you lost an internet connection and nothing on Twitter was loading except for tweets by the statistically most viewed profiles. Or from popular accounts in your region, like from local sports players, local news agencies, and local politicians. The tweets that do show up are updated in real time and are not being sent using the internet, yet show up in the Twitter app as if you were connected to the internet. In this scenario, these tweets are available to you and and an infinite amount of other users, regardless of where you and others are geographically, and regardless of an internet connection. In this scenario, tweets would be broadcast over the air. Similar to how broadcast TV works in the conventional sense, this data is broadcast over a wide geographical area and is available to all, regardless if you do have or don't have an internet connection. For the time you're not connected to the internet and are only using a broadcast signal, you can't like the tweets, you can't retweet them, and you can't comment, but you can view them. You can be informed regardless if you can afford to pay for an internet service, regardless of where you are geographically, regardless of a rainstorm knocking out satellite internet, and regardless of how many users are using Twitter in a given moment. In an age where more people are looking at Elon Musk tweets rather than watching a conventional TV network like NBC, broadcasting additional data over the air along with TV and radio could be the next generation of serving the public interest using the public airwaves. While many people think of ATSC 3.0 as a broadcast TV standard, ATSC 3.0 at its root is simply a standard that broadcasts internet protocol data to the masses. Just like how you can stream live TV, load a weather app, and listen to podcasts using the internet, ATSC 3.0 could do the exact same thing without an internet connection. This video is part one of a three-part series exploring ATSC 3.0's full potential. First, since ATSC 3.0 is internet protocol based, your ATSC 3.0 channel is coming from an IP address. ATSC 3.0 broadcasts use IP addresses in the range of 224.0.0.0 all the way to 239.255.255.255. So this is the TP-Link travel router that I've been using in a lot of my videos. I use this in the video about WTVJ in Miami, Florida, as well as uh, ATSC 3.0 on a boat. This router's internal settings page has an IP address that is designated as a local IP address. This does not get any accessibility outside on the open internet. Those IP addresses are made for local area network connections. It's the same way with ATSC 3.0 IP addresses. They are not accessible on the open internet. There's IP addresses that are designated as local for use from the router onward on that last mile delivery for the internet or for inner uh, local area network routing. And then there's public IP addresses, but in the case of ATSC 3.0, ATSC 3.0 broadcast sites have designated IP addresses just for those broadcast sites, just like these devices do. Here's an example ATSC 3.0 broadcast to show you what's going on with the IP addresses. So if you don't already know, an ATSC 3.0 broadcast is made up of the bootstrap, low-level signaling, and then the PLPs that actually carry the content. The low-level signaling tells the device the PLP structure and the modulation and code rates, along with other information about the ATSC 3.0 signal. Low-level signaling on all ATSC 3.0 broadcasts have an IP address of 224 dot zero dot two three dot six zero with a port of four nine three seven and low level signaling is incredibly robust it has a negative 7.8 decibel minimum snr now for plps i just created a hypothetical channel lineup with hypothetical ip addresses that fit the structure of how it's supposed to be keep in mind since atsc 3.0 is internet protocol based you could fill the plps with more than just tv channels as as long as there's at least one over-the-air broadcast channel on that station that is at least 480i, you could fill the rest of the bandwidth with data casting, sending things that would traditionally use the internet over an ATSC 3.0 signal. 
If it makes more sense this way, it's kind of like a wireless router was mounted on top of a tall tower and is sending out its local area network signal. But in the way ATSC 3.0 is done, there's no return channel since it's a download only broadcast and there's no routing going on. Now, technically, there is a caveat to this. In the ATSC 3.0 standards, you can send data back to the broadcast transmitter using your own antenna. And this is called DRC or dedicated return channel. Now there's a few reasons why this wouldn't be implemented in the first place. First off, it is illegal in the United States for consumers to just broadcast on the public airwaves without a license. So that's already a non-starter. Number two, it would require having broadcast equipment at your house or having your phone or device send data back. Consumers would have to buy an additional device or devices in order to do this. Now, when you use the internet, your device called a client is requesting data from a server. The server then thinks about the request for a few milliseconds and then sends data back to you. So without an upload and only a download link, how does this even work? Essentially, instead of your client device requesting data from a server, the broadcast transmitter is sending a download that is constantly repeating, or that can be changed dynamically. In part two of this video series, I'll be getting into the physical layer and what could be done with bit rates to try to maximize the radio channel, but for now, that's out of the scope of this video. ATSC 3.0 is not a television broadcast standard. ATSC 3.0 is an IP data delivery system, very similar to other technologies like 5G broadcast. What can be done with ATSC 3.0 is limited to ATSC 3.0's capacity, broadcasters, device manufacturers, and app developers, as well as entrepreneurs. If you like this video, consider subscribing and liking the video. Follow Western New York Over the Air on Instagram, Twitter, and threads at WNY Over the Air. Like Western New York Over the Air on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash WNY Over the Air. Support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash WNY Over the Air. And check out WNYOverTheAir.com for live band scans, cord cutting tips, and much more.